What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio right here on Live Hip Hop Daily. I'm Maurice Garland and my man, Brandon Peters. What's going on with you, bro? Oh, man. Maintaining, brother. Maintaining like everybody else, man. Blessed to be above ground, brother. So I can't complain. Uh, you know, I'm excited about this week, man. Our, our guest this week, man. This is it's, it's very rare that you can, you know, the, the term GOAT gets thrown around a lot. You know, but it's very rare that you you speak to somebody that actually em, embodies that. It's very rare that you speak to somebody who has been around since day one in hip hop, and we'll get into that with the dates as well. We was talking <laughs> off camera, but uh, man, I I, I just want to welcome this brother. Forty seven years in the game, he's a hip hop hall, hall of famer. One best documentary at the Big Apple Film Fest, Zulu Nation Humanitarian Award, Source 360 Icon Award. I think the brothers won a daytime Emmy. Got two New York Times bestseller under his belt. Uh, make sure that y'all pick that boy up. I just got mine in the mail right here. And I got Who Shot You, Ben Had Who Shot You, his other book for years, man. So we want to welcome, and I hope I don't butcher your name. I'm <laughs> We, I'm gonna call you Brother Ernie, and we go. You gonna tell us how to pronounce your name correctly? How about that? That's beautiful. Brother is a beautiful word because it means we're related. Yes. And Ernie is short for Ernest, which means serious. Yes. Okay. And uh, I get into some mathematics. They say that the essence of the universe is mathematics. If you study Islam, you understand mathematics. Okay, and even though Rakim tried to school you all in the mystery and talked about mathematics, many of you slept on that. And what they do, they keep saying that hip hop started in 73 or 74 with Cool Herc in the Bronx. Man, I tip my hat, I love the brother. Me and him were inducted into the, uh, the, the Source Awards icon thing together. I've known him forever and I got nothing of respect and love for him. But it didn't start with him. It didn't start in Jamaica. It, it started in the first, if you look at the beginning of the Bible, it tells you, pick up a Bible and it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The Word. If you go to Native American communities, you find hip hop for a thousand years, 10,000 years, because hip hop was comprised of four main elements, dance. Native people here in Africa and throughout the diaspora have always had dance. The MC, we've always, we, we're more beautiful at speaking than writing. You go to Africa to have griots who memorized the history of their tribe going back 100,000 lifetimes. So that's the MC. Yeah. The DJ is the drum. The drum. Well, they didn't have graffiti. Well, guess what? Look at the hieroglyphics and the pyramids. Look throughout the world at our sand paintings. Look at the stuff that we've created. That's graffiti. So the elements were there. Well, what about the fifth element? Wisdom, knowledge, and overstanding. Come on, man. We're an overstanding people. We overstand things and created, brothers created the traffic light, the first heart surgery. If that's not overstanding. So, yeah, I respect when people say hip hop started in 70 yen. I'm like, okay, it's like this. <laughs> Every now and then you're around RZA or Rakim. And you know, when you sit next to them brothers, you do the watch, you hold on to your chair. Mm. Because it's a rocket ship. <laughs> but not everybody's listening. They want to hear this song or that beat, but they're not listening. And these brothers go into mathematics. I've had KRS-One here in this room. Uh, Immortal Technique, Africa Bambada, everybody comes to see me. Uh, there's dope brothers in Canada, Tribe Call Red. Okay, most deaf, they talk about science and mathematics. Most deaf has a song called H2O. He says, some of you want Big Bang. 
I want a 20 year water tank. New water tank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think about New that. World water. Yeah. 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 H2O. Come on, man. This is serious. I am the Supreme Minister of Culture for the Universal Zulu Nation, and I take that role seriously. I'm not going to talk about some female or what she's wearing or who's zooming who. That's dang. That's gossip. You got a brother in, in New Jersey. Uh, his name is, um, he, he goes by many names. He's probably the dopest rapper on earth. And he did the, the song called Illuminati. Mm. Wise and intelligent. Yes. Well, he's been on the show. He's been on the show, yeah. Okay. okay. But he has several names, you know. He, he yeah. can't put it out. <laughs> he talks about uh, most of the stuff that we focus on is uh, most of the stuff we focus on is celebrity gossip. Who's sleeping with who? Oh, this guy's wife is doing that. No, 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 no. Right. You only have so much time in mathematics. You only have so much time on this earth. I'm 73 years old. 73. Wow. I still got everything, okay? Absolutely. And I'm not special. I just wake up each morning and I say, thank you. And that, that's like a thousand vitamins. Mm-hmm. And at night before I go to bed, if I had the worst day on earth, I say, thank you. All right? You have to bring that, that. We got that power in us. It's in our DNA. How the fuck do we survive all of this? Everything. How do how, Come on. Now we got cell phones, and electronics, and Wi-Fi. Brother, we had people that didn't even have drinking water and got their ass whipped from sunup to sundown and created us. And their blood and their DNA is inside of us. And it's preventing us. Man, you all got it easy, but you can't act easy. And I, I got to disagree with you, brother, when you say you're not special. You are definitely special, man. <laughs> Hip-hop would not be here the way it is right now if it wasn't for you. And that's real. God has used you as a, a true vessel, man. So we got to salute you while you're here. You. I thank you. But listen carefully. I had a vision. I watched TV as a kid. And the only time I saw us on TV, ooh, or in handcuffs, or in Tarzan movies, Ngawa. And, and the coolest native in the whole world was called Tanto, with the Long Ranger. Right. And Tanto in Spanish means stupid. Mm. That boy, Tanto, that means stupid. So I didn't have a father, I didn't have nothing. But I had a mother who got kicked out of school in the third grade for refusing to salute that flag and refusing to believe that thing. Uh, One nation under God with liberty and justice for, stop, stop, rewind. And I would go to school and she asked me, what you learned today? I learned Christopher, stop. And she would de-educate me. Mm. Okay. So then I went to college and I found out they know less than the people in the grammar school and the kindergarten. I would go to the colleges. I've spoken over 500 colleges and I asked them, do you know what money is? Nobody knows what money is. Oh, it's you. It's a medium of exchange. Do you know what liberation and freedom is? Most of them never even really considered what it means to be free. Free doesn't mean you walk out of the street, take your clothes off and smoke blunts and nobody bothers. That's not freedom. Freedom's when you can lift yourself up and the people around you without asking for tides. You know, oh, now I've lifted you all up, give me the loot. No. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Let's take it back to 73 real quick, man. Uh, Your days, you borrowed a camera, 35 millimeter camera, to, to shoot graffiti because you kept seeing all of these different different art popping up in your neighborhood in South Brooklyn, man. Take us back to that, brother. 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a world exclusive okay. that I just found out. Oh, here, here's the, I got the Ku Klux Klan in there. Oh, shit. <laughs> the public enemy. <laughs> yes, sir, P.E. I, I just, I'll give you a world exclusive. I found out I didn't borrow a camera. What? <laughs> I had a conversation two weeks ago. A lady called me up. So I read your bio and it says you borrowed a camera. I said, yeah, I borrowed your camera, baby. She said, no, it was your birthday and I bought you a camera. Oh, wow. I said, baby, it was so many years ago. She said, I bought you a camera. I bought you a camera. I said, damn, I thought <laughs> I borrowed yours. She said, you borrowed mine a little bit, but then I got tired of you asking me how to put film in and, you know, so on and so forth. And you you be out there, and I figure my camera get all banged up. So I bought you a camera. I said, "Damn, ain't that something?" So, so what what was it the the spark, man? Like, what made you want to document, or did you even know you were documenting back then? That's a beautiful question, and I'll give you a complicated but beautiful answer. Gil Scott Heron, mm -hmm. with those who know, consider him one of the architects of hip hop. Absolutely. I would listen to his music. And Malcolm X was killed when I turned 18. I won't even tell you my relationship with him and his family, et cetera. And when I first heard hip hop, I said, damn, finally, we have a vehicle to express ourselves and articulate our pain, our suffering, our hurt, our magic, our love, our fear, you know, our struggles. So I fell in love with hip hop instantly. A lot of what I heard was whack. A lot of it now is even whacker. Mm. But there were the shining lights, the most deaths, the MF Dooms, the Chuck D's, the, the, the incredible most deaf. Okay, there's so many brothers. There's a brother out of Philly, I hope you're aware of, called Jasiri X. Mm -hmm. His right. album's called Black Liberation Theology. You listen to that, it'll profoundly change your life. There's a brother in, in England. This cat came up to me. I was upstate New York, and this cat came up to me. And uh, African-type dude, and really deep. And he said to me, he said, uh, who's your favorite MC? So I said, Karis, Juan. Hello, uh, you know, this one, and most deaf, and you know, he said, No, he said, I've got a brother that that can that brought it into the 21st century. So I said, Who's that? He said, There's a brother out of England called Akala, A K A L A. I said, Really? So I put on some Akala and I got knocked out of my chair. I was like, Oh my God, that's incredible. And He's deep on like 16 levels. He's like uh, Yasin Bey, but he takes it even further. And uh, Akala. Got to check him out. Yeah, Akala, fire in the booth. And trust me, I can't put nothing out there <laughs> unless it's certified, because my reputation, it's like, you know, Michael Jordan, he ain't, compete, he ain't competed with nobody but himself. You know, Kobe, all them cats. When you read the level, you got you to gotta be on point because you they're not comparing you to nobody else. They're comparing you to, to yourself. So you, I can't go out there and say, oh, Nelly's dope because, nah. Man, you've been on Nelly head today on Twitter, man. <laughs> right, man. You compare the man to, to Trump and everything. You know why? You know why? You know why? I'm, I'm glad you see my message. You know why? You know why I'm on him? Because what? I of KRS One is my brother. Mm -hmm. And I was there when he was forming the Temple of Hip Hop. And every word out of his mouth is not, I'm KRS One, it's my people and let's build. And he created something out of nothing. Nelly was created out of the, the, the monetary system by the record labels, who's our enemies, because all they do is try to filter out the power. All right? Chuck D didn't get out there without struggle, they would rather hear you, you know, shaking your booty and, and crunking, mm -hmm. all right? And 
Let's talk about the live crew for a minute. Luke, people were on his case hard, all right? But guess what? Luke was from the street. Luke was from his people. Luke represented what he knew. He was not a creation of a record label. And let me tell you something and check it out. And if I lie to you about anything, like Chuck said, you have the right to smack me right here. When they had that big hurricane in Florida, people from around the world sent money to help the people, the poor. Guess where the money didn't get to? The to poor. Which community? Yeah. Yeah. The black community. Right. And guess who fill up trailer trucks full of food and clothes and water? Guess who did that? Luke. Luke. While everybody else was talking, I'm positive, I'm blacker than you. He was filling up trucks, which he made off his, you know, booty shaking music. So again, it's not, it's how you transform that message into salvation and survival of your people. Yeah, because like it's it's you know, cause, um, something that you kind of like brought up just now, because you know we we opened the conversation about you know like the four elements, and you know a lot of people they kind of feel sometimes like, hey man. You got too much dancing going on. Like, like, how do you approach that? Like, do you think that you know when we, when it feels like we have too much dancing going on, is that a good or bad thing? I mean, it is a part of it. You know, is, is it a thing where, me, that we need balance or or what? Let me go. Let me go to one of my heroes, and most of my heroes don't appear on no stamps. Huh. Chuck D said something. Chuck said, "You go to these industry parties." And you see all the white people in the corner talking business. All the black people dancing and trying to get over. He mm. says, I'm not saying we shouldn't dance. He said, maybe we should talk while we're dancing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> MC Light, MC Light, we were on a panel and they asked her, they said, Light, a lot of the lyrics and hip hop and a lot of the imagery is really terrible. It shows our women and, you know, they got, and Light was just sitting there. She said, well, they said, do you think we should let our children watch that? And she said, yes, but maybe you should sit with your child and explain what's going on. Yeah. And I read stuff and grabbed her and kissed her. You know what? I'm, I'm glad that you brought up light because, you, know, um, you know, I want to mention the book, obviously, Hip Hop at the End of the World. And, you know, outside of it being a wonderful document, um, I want to ask you, what was the thinking and putting the Tifa and light on the cover? Because so many times we see hip hop books and things like that, it's usually a dude, you know what I'm saying? But this book, it had two strong women on it. Like, was that, you know, on purpose? Was that by design, the choice to put the Tifa and uh, light on the cover? Well, let me show you how. Let me show you how, if I can find it. Yeah. And find it, but it's got to be here unless the feds have been here. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> That's okay. I got a weapon they can't understand. So, this is how the average image is on an, a, a rap album or a rap uh, book. You know, some crazy thing, you know, like that. <laughs> something you could skin a rhinoceros with, okay? Yeah. Brother's not paying attention. He's he's reading, see. But uh <laughs> and I won't even bring out the big ones. But um uh, I have to give credit to my editor for the book. His name is Ian. Ian Luna. Luna means moon. So I knew when I met him there was some mathematics there. He said we don't need to have a sausage party. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he said, no. He said, that's been done. He said, you love women. You have some of the most beautiful pictures of women I've ever seen. He said, let's put some women on the cover. So I looked and I found a picture of Light and Latifah. They were actually dancing in the street when I took the picture. They were uh, part of... Uh, heal with KRS One, uh, Heal wow. Human Education Against Lies, and uh, they were in Harlem. And you know, in them videos, the videos take forever. So there's a lot of 
time, up time, down time, sideways time, and it was a beautiful day. So we just started taking pictures. And I got this incredible picture of these sisters. Just, and then later, uh, I think in the book, there's pictures of them dancing, you know, just to break time. But that's that's a true story. Here's, here's, some, here's why they call me a legend. Biggie, Bobby Brown, and Whitney. Hmm. Right. Okay. And I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but there's more Latifah. Yeah. Roxanne Chante, who's one of the dopest females ever, said, if Brother Ernie didn't take your picture, you're not hip hop. <laughs> hey. And this is Rakim signing my book. Man. That's awesome. Who, who has been, I think, obviously, let's take public enemy out of this because I know that's a special relationship. Who has been your favorite person in hip hop to shoot over the years? Well, that's complicated because I was walking down the street and I ran into Ice Cube and we're walking down the street and we're talking. This is a midtown and had thousands of people. And the police, we walked past a police station and he had a, a, a you know, I want to kill Sam, a lot of things, and he was affiliated at that time with the nation is not so the police were really you know they were giving him the finger and doing all this stuff mm. so it was me him king son who stands about six foot eight and a couple of other brothers and a bunch of cops and they're on the other side of the street so i said we, we walked past this uh yeah that's what an iconic was, yeah mm -hmm. that's that was the Liberty Travel Center. So I said, let me take a picture of you with the Statue of Liberty for the police. He says, what? I said, Ernie style. He goes, oh, he's choking. He said, bitch. And, you know, the cops are losing their minds. And he's just like, so that's the story behind that. So, yeah, Ice Cube was probably uh, one of the people that I love, Chuck D, Flavor, I spent a lot of time with. And I have to give it up to these three brothers. Melly Mel, because he arguably did one of the greatest songs in hip hop. Chuck D, because I'll never forget one song I heard, I was driving and I had to pull over and stop and I almost lost my mind. It was Khalid Muhammad saying, have you forgotten that once we were brought here, robbed of our name, robbed of our culture. We lost our religion, our God, and by the way we act, many of us yeah, lost, lost our mind. Our mind. I, was like, eh! I was like, I was energized. I wanted to go smack some police. You know, it was just <laughs> like my brain. And, and Ice T, you know, he, he showed in his videos the gangster life, but how short that gangster life is and how dangerous it is oh, yeah. for the community. So, and L because he 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 found the the, the, the fountain of youth. Those mm. people like this and get old and fat and ugly and he just keeps mm -hmm. getting you know. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to L man. I, talk a little bit about your involvement with the rockthebells.com situation. <sighs> I get a phone call, and I get a phone call from a lot of people, but I got a, I got a phone call from LA. He talked to me for one hour. I like to talk, he didn't let me talk. One hour and 20 minutes, I turned. He didn't even, he didn't even let me talk. He said, brother, I'm gonna make this short. He lied. He said, but I'm gonna make it sweet. He told the truth. He said, I want you down with us. I said, man, I'm not a dancer booty shaker, singer, rapper, I don't do beats. He said, you're an icon. Oh. Okay, what do you want? He said, I want you to be done with this. He said, because you were done from the beginning. He said, I want to create our own Apple, hmm. our own entity, our own third dimensional format, you know, which incorporates other icons not necessarily people that are famous. Famous is fleeting. 
icons are like the Slick Ricks. Slick Rick hasn't done 25 albums, but he's an icon. Absolutely. Okay. And there are people that, that you identify with hip hop, but they, they really haven't added nothing. Okay. And there are some people that by their very nature are hip hop. Rizzo, Method Man. If you saw him in The Wire, <laughs> Omar and Cheese, and you know, uh, that, that's my story. And I love the idea of being part. I'm 73, man. You know, and I love the idea that not only can I pass on information to new generations and, and provide for my family and my kids, my seed, my, my grandkids. That's beautiful and powerful, and I love it, and I respect that. And Chuck D, I love him so much, it's a shame. And, and unless you've met Chuck and been around him, you know, he looks cool, he talks cool. His energy, Yasin Bey, I'm sitting here, with this. I gotta share this story. I'm sitting here, I'm shuffling paper. A couple of days before Christmas, I'm bored, thinking about bills, thinking about, and it's, it's I don't know, nine o'clock, Eight o'clock at night, I'm tired. I'm, you know, I had a long day. And the phone rings. I don't know who is that? And I pick it up. I said, Yeah. He said, Brother Ernie. I said, Yeah. He said, This is Yassin Bay. I said, What's up, brother? He said, I'm doing a show at the Apollo tonight in Harlem. And it will probably be my last show at the Apollo. I said, Okay. He said, I want you to be there. I said, You want to hire me to do photography? He said, no. I need your energy. I need your strength there with me. Mm. And lightning hit me. Here's a brother I respect and revere. And he's taking time. And then I got up there and his, his limo pulls up and like a thousand people, he walked past me and just held me, held me. And I didn't know the brother like that because every time we've been together, there's always been 50 other people. But he knew. And that touched my heart. He did an incredible show. He even wore my medallion. Mm. John Trudeau and, and Leonard Peltier. And at the end of the show, you know, everybody crowded. He walked up to me and just held me. And he had tears in his eyes. That's who hip hop is to me. That's what hip hop is to me. It's that, that magic, that majesty, that power. And only if you have really great love for your people, for yourself, for your art form, can you translate that into music, mm. into sound, into all the different elements. And I've been blessed. KRS One, I got a, a piece of paper here somewhere that says, Brother Ernie is the god of hip hop photography. <laughs> I was like, damn. You know, I but. Mean, who else? I don't know, man. I, I just keep doing what I do. How many of you, I'll share something crazy with you. How many of you remember The Source? Okay. I, I wrote, yeah, yeah, we yeah. both wrote for The we Source. We both wrote for The Source, read it, collected okay. it, still got yeah. some. Well, I was there when it was a four page Xerox paper. Okay. And I helped start it. And I won't get into what happened. Right. But. Everybody would pick up that magazine and they instantly watch this. They would go to the back page. Yep. Cartoon. Yep. And that was Andre Leroy Davis. And it was yeah. called The Last Word. And everybody picked up the magazine. And people were mad because he dissed them or thought that he dissed them, but he was making them official. Yep. And they were happy because they were in. Well, the brother did a picture of me as Moses. Wow. And by my feet, it, it says Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> and let me read this to you. In the Ten Commandments, it says, think, feel, explore, document, and live. Create, honor, inspire, research, and respect. And at my feet, it says Crunk, Nelly, somebody whose name I won't mention, but who's spent his whole life messing with 
uh, LL Cool J. His his short his career like my brother Biggie said, your your reign on the top was short like leprechauns. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. So I love that did. you always ride for your friends, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the the books now. You know, who shot you came out, and that you know that pretty much was is the preeminent photograph hip hop book. <laughs> What made you come back 16 years later with more? First of all, most photographers wouldn't even have more to show after that book. But you had a ton of, I mean, this book is heavy. Like you got a ton of photos that we had never seen before. The 250 pictures in it, it weighs three and a half pounds. It's on sale at uh, Amazon for 40% off. So it's a deal. Um, let me tell you a story that's kind of controversial and involves me and the most evil man in the world. And I'm a nobody, man. I got holes in my shoes. I'm, you know, I'm just a simple cat. And this cat is one of the richest cats in the world. And he's responsible for Fox News and England the Sun, which is just as racist as, you know, this is the most evil cat in the world. And I had the conflict with him. And it dealt with who shot you. Never, ever, and this, you know, I try to share with you all, never underestimate the power of your spirit. As, as a person, I'm nothing, I'm nobody. But I have these energies and this, this DNA and all these spirits. I agreed to do this book, Who Shot You? And in the book, I talk about the coming colonization of hip hop. This is 2000, I wrote this. So in it, I talk about the coming colonization of hip hop because hip hop was just too black, too raw, too strong, too informative and too spiritual to be allowed not to be challenged by the beast. Right. So. I did the pictures, put in the text. Then I get a phone call from my co-writer, my co-author, who tells me, brother, they gave us a huge advance. They gave us the title of the book. They let us make the cover. They gave us everything we asked for. They just want one thing. I said, what's that? He said, we want, they want you to take that essay out. Yeah. Uh -uh. So... I thought about it. I said, hmm, why? They said, well, they just want it out. So I said, at that time, I'm 55 years old. I lived 55 years without a book. I can live another 55 years without a book. Mm -hmm. I ain't taking it. And I said, I already got part of my money, so they could come after me and try to get the money, but the money's already spent, unless they want to go to the, to the people I paid bills to and get it back from the insurance mm -hmm. company and the doctors and the landlord and the mortgage, you know. So they they had they didn't call me, they called him because they knew he was more reasonable and more logical. <laughs> <laughs> so they did you know, so I said no. So the word came back to me that if I don't take it out, I'm not gonna have a book. So I said, okay, good. Now they gotta come after me for the money they already gave me. And, and undo all that work. So I said, no. I said, if, it, if that essay bothers the most evil man in the world, Rupert Murdoch, mm -hmm. then I'll tell you what. Let's keep the essay and get rid of the book. Mm -hmm. and that is, mm -hmm. I love it. Fucking Indians, they're stupid. They're crazy. They don't know <laughs> to drink too much. And the truth is, I don't drink. I don't smoke nothing. Okay, because... If I'm drunk, they can kill me and say, well, he was drunk and disorderly, or he was high. Anybody that knows me, no, anybody put a hand on me. They said, Brother Ernie was doing what Brother Ernie do. So anyway, a couple of weeks later, I had forgotten about the book, and I didn't tell you why I wasn't worried about that. It involves the spirits. Now, follow me. 
a couple of weeks later, they say, brother, we're going to do the book anyway, and we're going to keep your essay in. But guess what? The devil got the last laugh because everybody loves the pictures. All over the world, people send me email, brother, we love you, but we love you, you know. Nobody read the essay. Hmm. So Rupert got the last laugh. That's why Fox News, The Sun, all this stuff have titties and you know all this stuff and, and very little text and they appeal to your most base thing. Yeah. So very few people read that. So again, I'm giving you all the insider. Well, the thing is, people still got that book. So people are going to read it. It's people to see it. You see it when you're supposed to see it. Because even and not, only that, not only that, people are at home now <laughs> yeah. when they wasn't at home before. So they're, they're reading uh, 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 menus, uh, Chinese takeout menus, and they're reading, you know, they're reading everything. So mm -hmm. maybe just maybe now with this, they'll be uh, <sighs> they'll be reading. So, but I warned, I warned, I warned. Go ahead, Reese. So, you know, you know, with the whole, you know, Rupert Murdoch situation, them trying to, you know, deny you something. I want to know in your journey as a photographer, like you have taken so many beautiful photos, captured so many beautiful moments. Um, have there been times where, you know, you was doing your thing and somebody was like, nah, brother Ernie, not now. I don't want you to take a picture of this. So no, today is not the day for that. Like, have you ever experienced that um, in your journeys and, you know, how did you how, how did you respond to that as a photographer and as a you know spiritual person? You know what I'm saying? Sadly and wonderfully, the one cat, one dude in my life ever did that to me. And I got dressed up, got all my stuff, went up to Harlem, went up to 126th Street, went to his house, went in his bedroom, and he said he couldn't do it. He didn't have a haircut. He hadn't shaved his clothes, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was Dougie Fresh. Mm. Now, it's funny how God works. I wasn't mad because I loved the brother. I wasn't mad because he came at me with respect. Well, a few years later, Russell Simmons calls me and everything, nothing happens by itself. There's, there's vibrations. Russell Simmons calls me, he said, Brother Ernie, he said, I want you to come. I'm doing a thing at the, uh, the, the in New York, at the Palladium. We're having a hip hop thing. And I want you to, and you know, he, he hired me for everything. And he always gave me cash, never played with my money, you know, so, and I love Russell. So I get there and this dude, who I won't mention, sees me and he starts mounting off at me. He says, you want me to pay you? Fuck you. I was like, look, chill. He says, no. He says, I heard you went to the label. They ain't paying you. I said, you asked me to do the shoot. You supposed to pay. He said, well, fuck that. And he steps to me. And there's a boxer who's a friend of mine, stepped between us. He was a friend of this cat. And he stepped between us and he told the brother, he said, if you fight him, you got to fight me. Hmm. I was, I put my cameras down. I was like in warrior mode because I didn't need, it's one thing not to pay me, and, but it's another thing to disrespect me. And it's another thing to step to my face. So Dougie is standing there and Dougie puts his arms around me. And instead of saying, don't fight, be cool, all that dumb shit, he whispers in my ear and he said, brother, we love you, we need you, and you have so much more work to do. He said, please, be calm, find yourself, come on, go in there, go deep. And he's praying and whispering in my ear. Wow. So because I didn't get stupid with him when he did that, and because he did it respectfully, I responded respectfully, go fast forward to the Palladium, what could have been bad turned good. And he said something else. He says, they want to see us fight. They want to see us stupid. And they want to see us hurt each other. So I stepped back. I said, brother, you got it. And the cat that I was beefing with 
come up, grab me, and hug me. Hmm. Wow. And, and to this day, we're friends. It happened. We let it go. Shit happens. And he, he held me. And to this day, every time I see him, I put my hands up. You ready now? He said, no, no. We're good. <laughs> you know, either that or, or I'll forget. And he put his hands up. You ready now? And this is a big dude. He's bigger than me. I weigh 260. I'm over six foot. So this guy, he's big. And uh, yeah, every time he sees me, we put our hands up and we laugh because it could have been stupid. But that's yeah. Dougie Fresh. And he said that. He it's, couldn't do it. It's crazy, man. I, I actually, I've met you a couple times, but I met you at uh, VH1 Hip Hop Honors when, when Too Short got inducted, because I'm from Oakland, so we were all there to support Short. And the one thing that I, it tripped me out, I was just like, yo, this dude is like hella, hella, hella humble. Like just a great spirit. Like it tripped me out, because you know how those types of, crowds are and i just came up and spoke i didn't even introduce myself i was just like salute you know what i mean because i know who you are and i know a lot of them people they move and they're not paying attention but i and i and i don't remember where we met the second time but it just it always amazes me man just how with all the things that you have done how you're just like a, a regular dude man like just super humble super down to earth i can't you know it's like somebody being tall. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, look at your beard. It got gray in it. I mean, you know, my hair got gray in it. I mean, yeah. you know, what am I going to do? Walk around. And once you do that, you lose any authenticity anyway. You ain't real no more, so you lose it. So, you know, brother, look, we're on this earth for a minute. And we carry that DNA in us. We carry that message. And if you're open and listen, this, look look at my look at my energy center here. All of those medallions were given to me. Wow. Some were handmade by native women, beaded, even this beaded, and they've given to me. This is the Zulu. This is a brother uh, who has the shining path, uh, and he did that from this photograph that this uh, sister had done of me. Hmm. So, you know, I carry all that with great uh, responsibility. And let me tell you about the word responsibility. That's an amazing word. Most of us, we throw out words and we use responsibility. It's your, yeah, slow down. Responsibility. Your response to the best of your ability. And we've been hearing that word, but we never, mm. that's You're what's right. called safer. That's where responsibility. So, what I do is my responsibility. It's my responsibility. It is my responsibility. And, you know, brother, I did a movie, uh, that, uh, won an Emmy, uh, you know, all this stuff. And his brother's coming up to me and sister's coming up to me. Now, let me get back to who shot you. I'm going to blow your mind. Who shot you? Uh, Brother comes up to me from the FOI. Brother stands six five, I don't know how many pounds, and he used to be in charge of security at the uh, the Roxy, which used to be Studio Fifty Four. First time I walk in there, I walk in, and there's all these brothers patting you down and X-raying you and all this. And he comes up to me and he looks in my eyes, big dude. And he tells them, he said, he's clean. He said, we got to search him. He said, he's clean. I said, no, search me. So they search me. Of course, I'm clean because the weapons I carry, you can't see. Hmm. So I said, brother, thank you. He said, for what? I said, for searching me. He said, what do you mean? He said, we search. You know, I said, no, I have to thank you for searching me. Because if you're searching me, you're searching everybody. And that means I'm going to be in there, go in safe and come out safe. That's all we said. A couple of weeks later, I walked in. He's there, you know, and, you know, he just, he's the FOI, Fruit of Islam. He's, he's not playing. So, you know, finally we spoke and he's a very righteous brother, you know. And... One day he comes up to me, 
in 2001, I'm somewhere. And he says to me, he said, brother, I got to talk to you. So I was like thinking, okay, so we go aside. He said, I had a dream. So like a dumbass, I was, you know, I said, oh, you think you're Dr. King? He said, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say that to a guy 6'5 that's, you know, spends his lunch hour doing push-ups. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, bro. He said, I had a dream that you did a book. I said, okay. He said, and I told him, I said, I ain't doing no book. I said, because writers, all the writers I know are flaky. They come, they do the job. Then they disappear, you know, I, I, I ain't doing it. He said, you're going to do a book and it's going to be called Who Shot You? So I thought about it. A few months later, get a phone call. Sure enough, it happens. That's the story. It came in a dream. Fast forward to 2018. The brother comes up to me again. 2018, this is 16 years later. He said, brother. By then, we're, we're brothers. I mean, by then, we're, you know. He says, I, matter of fact, I was with him the last night. I was with Biggie, and I took a picture of the two of them. And uh, he comes up to me. He said, brother, I had a dream. This time, I remembered I wasn't going to open my mouth. He might not be in a good mood. <laughs> so I said, okay. He said, I had a dream you did a book. So I didn't want to tell him I ain't doing no books. He said, you're going to do a book and it's going to be called Hip Hop at the End of the World. Sure enough, Germany calls me and they want to do uh, a book on Carhartt, the clothing line, and they wanted to know if I had pictures. So I looked through, I find everybody, Tretch, everybody wearing Carhartt. I sent the pictures. They paid me good. They were really nice. And a few months later, I got a phone call. They said, uh, you did a book with Carhartt. I said, yes, I did. Uh, they said, well, that was Rizzoli Books. I said, okay. They said, well, we love those pictures. I said, okay. They said, we want you to do a book. So we, we, you, you're okay with coming for a meeting. So I go to the meeting and I'm, I'm like, and sure enough, they want to do a book. Mm -hmm. And they had done their homework. They knew who I was, but I was, you know, so. And out of nowhere, the cat asked me, he says, do you have a working title? So instantly I said, yeah, I said, but you probably won't like it. And you probably, he said, what is it? I said, hip hop at the end of the world. So the people in the room are like this. So I said, oh, I blew that. <laughs> I started laughing. They said they love it. So I got the brother on the phone. I got him on speakerphone. I said, brother, you're on speakerphone. He said, what's up? I said, well, I'm at Rizzoli Books. And they asked me for a title of the book. And I said, I told him what you told me. He said, yeah, hip hop at the end of the world. And the people in the room were like, whoa. And mm. he said, it came to me in a dream. He was talking to them. Yeah. It came to them in a dream. So that's where you have the physical, the spiritual, the metaphysical, which is a mix of spiritual and physical. And that's how this book, Hip Hop at the End of the World, came into being. Okay. And, um, that's so so I'm giving you all the I'm giving you all the raw and cut. Hey man, I love it. I love it. Uh, question for you: There's a lot of you know younger uh, photographers out here now. You got the the Gunner Stalls, the Cam Kirks, all of these guys. Um, do you have you mentored any cats, or do you pay attention to some of the younger cats that are documenting the culture now? And that's a, that's a complicated question. There, there's a young brother. I was at a music video with my niece and her little girlfriend. She's about 10 or 12. And this is a funny story. It involves Little Wayne. And they had never been to a music video. And I see this kid, young brother on a bicycle, skinny kid, tall kid. And he had a camera. I said, what are you doing with that camera? He said, I'm taking pictures. I said, do you know who I am? He said, no. I said, and you don't care who I am, do you? He said, well, no, I didn't. I said, no, you don't know who I am. And you got a camera? He said, yeah, and I'm trying to be, trying to scare him. I said, what would you do if I took your bike? 
He said, you're not going to take my bike. I said, I'm going to take your bike. And I took the bike. I drove around the block, came back. <laughs> so he's standing there and he's smiling. And I know the boy ain't stupid. So I was like, you didn't get upset? He said, no, I'll get another bike. So I look at this kid. I said, listen, you want to be a photographer? He said, yeah. So I gave him my card. I said, be here Monday morning. I'm going to have you clean my studio and so on. So I had him come to the studio and he met everybody, Master P, everybody, 50 Cent, everybody. And, you know, I did that old karate kid thing, you know, where I made him clean and sweet, but at the same time, I'm showing him. Yeah. Well, the kid went on and he ain't messing with hip hop. He does Fortune 500. Houses that cost $50, $60 million. He does the interiors. His name is Rayon Richards. And Rayon Richards is a young brother, but he's like the king of New York now. You know, and he's getting paid. And uh, he's a beautiful kid. But let me tell you a crazy story how little Wayne got involved in that. My niece and her little girlfriend, and I had never heard of little Wayne. I had never heard the song, you know, Bling Bling. Mm-hmm. And I said, you girls hungry, they're like, bling, bling. So every time I talk to them, they're wise assing on me. I said, you want to go to this? Yeah, bling, bling. So I was like, okay, <laughs> y'all playing me. I said, are you hungry? Bling, bling. I said, what time you got? You know, they were just wise yeah. ass. I think the girl's name was Shaniqua and the other one's Christina. So they're just bling, bling, bling. I said, all right, you're playing with the wrong cat. So that week I had a shoot with the hot boys. So I invited them to the studio, you know, and her, her older brother. So I take little Wayne aside and I said, Wayne, I need a favor. He said, sure, brother, whatever you need. Of course, he was on like 17 or 18. I said, every time these little girls come around you, get in their face and say, bling, bling. <laughs> <laughs> bling, bling, bling. So, and I said, tell your boys. So he said, okay. So the girls come. We're doing a shoot and there's a break. And the, the girls ask for an autograph. And Wayne says, bling, bling. And he's just messing with them. And the boys, all the hot boys are messing with them. And, you know, they look at me. I said, bling, bling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with an OG. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love it, man. We got it. We got to wrap up, man. This has been beautiful, man. We love you, man. I thank, thank you so much for what you've contributed to the culture, man. Really appreciate you, man. For real, yeah, for, yeah. Uh -oh, he's pulling out some. What, you, what are you pulling out now for y'all watching the video? You got, you, you, going you, got the you got a minute? Yeah, yeah. let's go. To it. I told you I love women, right? Yeah, All right. I'm not even going to pull out my biggie book, but Maya. Wow. That's that is crazy. This is before Latifah became Latifah. Mm. It was her and Al and Kiki, and they were the Safari sisters. Wow. And this is Latifah again. Crazy shit just popped up. Okay, let's see what else. Beautiful. And believe me, I got 10 more books of me if I so choose. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to do any more books. <laughs> yeah, because I, I saw that you've been saying that a lot on social media. Like, you know, you're saying that you're certain that hip hop at the end of the world is going to be your last book. Um. Why, why, why are you so certain that that's going to be your last book? Uh, I take a deep breath. <laughs> See, that's for adults only. Lord, hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. You never say never to nothing. But, wow. Uh, I don't know, man. Just the whole nature of doing books is... Uh, Oh, God. Awesome. The whole nature of doing books. You show me somebody more beautiful, please. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> gorgeous. Lauren Hill, yes. Queen. 
Yeah, the, the idea of books is difficult because uh, it's you're at the mercy of somebody else. If you do a book, you get 10, 12, 15%, and somebody else gets 85%. Right. And at the end of the day, no matter how famous you are, no matter how cool the greatest this or the greatest that, you still got to pay bills. Hmm. Yeah. Kim, Lil' Kim, and Brandy, wow. And, uh, yeah, I, I love the idea of books because you can reach people around the world, but, uh, you know, economically, I don't know if it's the right thing to do. Hmm. Uh, Wow. Well, I could show you, I could, I could literally, and no exaggeration, I could do 25 books a day uh, with Biggie. <laughs> yeah. You got time? Yep. Yeah, We're man. We're going to make the time. <laughs> Dope. See, I didn't have a studio. I told people I had the biggest studio in the world. I said, really? Yeah, it's called New York City. Right. Right. Chris Cross, Kid and Play. Wow. He looks so much like his father. Right. Mm -hmm. His same year in two different vibes. Yeah. Five. That's, that's, that was the beauty of hip hop back then. Yeah. It didn't all sound the same. And it didn't all act the same. And I'm going to tell you something. You need to go back and listen to Rakim when he sang The Mystery Who Is God, Please. Wow. Oh, that's, he, you know, that's crazy. The, the chains are almost identical. <laughs> he rocking Jay Z. You know, a lot of people got Jay Z kind of twisted because I know him to be a humble, you know, straight cat, man. Yeah. Show so life, madism. Wyclef. And here's some cats coming out of a strip joint. <laughs> King, King T. Yes, sir. Jodeci. This was oh. the last picture shot of Punk. Wow. I did it for a Japanese magazine. I love that brother. I cried when he passed. Nori. It's awesome, man. Illegal. Illegal. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Scorpio from. Yeah. Yeah. Scorpio. That Grand, Grand Wizard Theodore. Yeah. The cat who the scratch. No, that's just, you were everywhere. Tim Dog. Yeah, Tim Dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely a time. <laughs> yeah, for real. We got Dougie Fresh and Michael Jordan together, too. This is uh, oh, Father wow. and Chief. Dougie Fresh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly, buddy. <laughs> you know, you know what I knew? I was on point when I went to Harlem and all up and down 105th Street, they had these giant uh, uh, cloths with my pictures on them of stars that they would, you know, they had a picture of a champagne bottle or something. Yeah. And, you know, be down or whatever kind of cool thing. And those were all my pictures. And I would always go up to them cats and say, thanks for the props. And they're like, what do you mean? And I would tell them, ODB. Dirty. Raekwon. It's dope. Some cat, I don't know, some cat from somewhere. <laughs> Ice T. <laughs> West West. Ice T is a profound cat, man. Don't ever. And, uh, yeah. and I'm so proud of you. you know who that is. Oh, yes, man. That, this is probably one of the rare photos of that man without the mask. Yep. Man, I love him. <laughs> I love him. I love him. Whole cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, Dougie oh, wow. Fresh and ODB. I've never that, seen that. That's such a beautiful moment. ODB went up. Dougie was doing the, 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 his old thing with Slick Rick. 
and ODB went up and grabbed the mic. He said, man, that shit is played out. He said, it's old. And everybody in the room, the room was packed. <laughs> he says, it ain't real. When you get up and do that shit, it ain't real. You got to keep the shit real. And I was like, oh, God, I love Dougie. But what's Dougie going to do? Dougie started laughing and said, let's do a duet. And they did a whole thing together, the show and the whole thing. And, you know, Dougie took it back to real hip hop. <sighs> That's such a beautiful moment. And it could have been such a, you know, because the bodyguards came. And he said, no, no, get out of here. Get out of here. This is cool. This is my people. So right. they were going to drag him off the stage. <laughs> Her oh. Search turned out to be a really great cat in, in my life. Run DMC, uh, DMC and Keith Haring. Wow. Artists who wow. Look at this. Dayla. Young Dayla. They put me in that video. Uh, all good. All good. Yeah, you were you were scaring the little kid in the drive-thru. <laughs> Is that enough bling? All right. <laughs> Tim Dog. Tim Dog. The infamous. That's the bridge. Yeah. yeah. And look at this. Come on, who's that? Quick. Oh, we know that's Rizzle. No! No, ah. I mean, I, 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 we, do, we, we do not see the face, you know what I'm saying? We see the, the bling. Who's who's Golden Arms? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you got, got You got Jodeci. Wow. <laughs> right. That's called getting head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is in the book. Where's his other hand? Wow. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking to the cat and he's, he's playing. I was like. That's hey. wild. Different kind of time. Different kind of time. Well, brother, we got to we gotta run, brother. We got another <laughs> show coming up after us. Yeah, but they can wait. They can wait. I, I want to see the biggie. You want to see the biggie? Okay. Yeah. I got you talk about bling. Yeah, we, I told you about natives and hip hop. Look. Yeah. Wow. Is that enough bling? That makes Slug Rick look naked. Right. <laughs> So wow. Biggie, I mean, Biggie. That's my favorite song by Biggie. Kick in the door, oh, wave yeah. the four four. Biggie. Dun, dun, dun. I love that beat. I love everything about it. Where's Biggie? Biggie. Biggie. Come on, Biggie, where you at? Slip Rig, Hello Cool J. Molly Maul. Now, Brother Ernie, do you have these these beautiful photos digitized as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. DMX, Bobby Brown, George Clinton, Melly Mel and Scorpio, Lost Boys, Prodigy. Who's Biggie? Public Enemy. Damn. Jay-Z, Fab Five, Cypress Hill, Ice Cube, Fat Joe, Lil Wayne. Oh. Ben Bada, Kane, KRS-One, Kanye. What? <laughs> well, no punches. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Professor X. I don't know where my biggie shit is. I'm a I'm a I'm a big X Clan fan. We had Just Blaze on probably a month and a half ago. We had a whole conversation about X Clan. Rest in peace, Professor X. Well, last week I was on the phone with Paradise for an hour. Wow. You know, his oh, story. Wow. You know, uh, Paradise's story, the architect? Yes. Cypress Hill. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Paradise is undergoing some shit. He's, uh, look, he lost his uh, eyesight. He's blind thanks to the number one killer of black folks next to jealousy, uh, diabetes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ready? You ain't ready. Nah, we ready. Wow. 
almost got slapped in the mouth for that picture. Why? Because I went up to Biggie and he gave me a hug. I said, man, you got to be real careful. He said, why, brother? I said, because bear hunting season just started today. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he so. actually took, he took a swing at me and missed because I backed up. <laughs> For those who are listening and not watching, Biggie has on a, a nice fur coat in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Biggie was about, he tried to get me. I was quick with them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these are Biggie photos I've never seen before. I've never saw that one. Yeah, oh, Ava Rex. Ava Rex jacket. Yeah, there's a crazy story about the Ava Rex jacket. Somebody came to me and said they wanted the picture. They were going to put it inside the actual Ava Rex jacket and auction it for a charity. And they took the picture, they blew it up, and they put it inside. Wow. And guess who won? Who? Mary J. Blinds. And when she got the thing and opened it up, she started crying. Wow. You tell me me about, you know, spirits. Yeah. That picture is crazy. That's it. Oh, that's that's the uh, 112 video shoot. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? When I went up there, Biggie grabbed the mic. He says, "Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Ernie. It ain't nothing changed." And he's and Puffy said, "Man, we're wasting money. I I, I pray somebody take that. <laughs> that. I'll give him a thousand dollars right now for that." Yeah, man. Oh, the little homies. Who's the dude's name? Uh, DJ Just. Just. Yeah. Just. Wow, Pac and Yo-Yo. That's crazy. Who is Lisa, that? Lisa. Yeah, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa. Uh-huh. Oh, that's tight, man. Yeah, super tight. That'd be tight. This is the Big E. Yeah. Wow, New Jack City. The infamous Nino wedding Brown. Huh. This is I mean, look at the color of the audience. Right. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> eating it up. The most. That's, that's the most wearing my medallion. The political prisoner. Leonard Peltier. Them uh Ice T's been part of Zulu as long as I have or longer. Tip and most. I love Q tip too. I ain't gonna front. Q tip added a whole nother dimension to this shit. That thing he did with Janet. Janet. Yeah. Remember right, that yeah. thing? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, that from Was that the down with the king shoot? Yeah. And here they are with no Adidas. Wow. Oh, wow. No Adidas. Oh, that's the early 90s. Uh, no, DLC. no, when they were trying to jerk them, uh, when they were trying to jerk, Adidas was trying to jerk them, and they went out there. Here's the third member. Look at look who else is in the group. Big Daddy Ah, uh, yeah. No Adidas. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Was, he didn't want to give him no no loot. And this is Reverend Martin when he first became a reverend. Mm. EMC wearing my medallion. And I snatched off him. <laughs> Puff. Kim and Puff, wow. Oh, who can forget the shiny suits? Wow, man. Taking it back. I almost got killed doing that because I had to go up on this thing, walk this tiny little damn. Wow. Wow. Queens. Yeah, man. Woo, yeah, damn crazy. crazy. Hell yeah. Come on, man. We cannot forget that Prince. No, okay, man. who's it at? Let's test you real quick. John Forte. John Forte. Okay, I'm sorry. 
I do what I tell you when I hit you, man. We went on 60 minutes to TMZ. We are... <laughs> wow. Usher. Wow. That must have been like first album, Usher. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's a sweet dude, man. I swear to God, he's sweet. He's just like sweet in a positive sense. He's yeah. just like working with him, everything. The little Kim was that way. There's just certain people, man, that all they want to do is do what they're supposed to do, which is be in that zone and, and be beautiful. And uh, I ain't got nothing but love for Usher. For most of these cats, man, it's very, 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 very rare that anybody, you know, gets on my one bad nerve. And 99.9%, uh, you know, they, they recognize and, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, it's that energy that creates the vibe. I could show you a hundred more books, man. If you have me back on, I'll do it. Yeah, we, we definitely have you. Back. We definitely got to do a part two and maybe three of this. <laughs> exactly. exactly, we have to, but brother, we got we definitely got to run. They we getting hit by the producer. <laughs> I <laughs> see. I didn't even know you sketched. I didn't. Even, <laughs> you just you you got all the talent, brother. That's crazy. You're showing us some of these sketches. Yeah. That's insane, man. Arnie, please let people know where they can where they can find you on social, where they can support and buy the book for most importantly. Yeah, um, the book is at brotherearnie.com. It's three and a half pounds. It's 40% off on Amazon, three and a half pounds. Brotherearnie.com, B-R-O-T-H-E-R-E-R-N-I-E.com. My email is brotherearnie at gmail.com. Uh, my name is... Um, it's hard to pronounce, but it's my Facebook. You post all that. The, the can I? Can I try? Can I try it? I, Panicchioli. No, man, you're killing it. Oh my <laughs> man! Damn, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> How do we pronounce your last name, brother? Anacoli. Anacoli. Pan, Sorry. Pan is bread, and Scioli is sky. So it's bread from the sky or heavenly bread. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Brother, brother Ernie yeah. Panicoli. See, I got it right that time. Yeah. We appreciate brother. For real, for real. Much respect, much love. Thank Please, you. Do me, do me a favor on a personal. After yeah. this is over, reach out to me. You know, I just, just brothers. I'm going to stay uh, in touch. This way, this way, when I go down to Atlanta or whatever, I'm not going down there just, you know, with strangers. But uh, yeah. reach out. I did a show at the African American Museum there, and it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever done. And the brother who, who runs it is about 80 something. And I remember the opening had this giant picture of an American flag with bullets on every star. And that mm. was my picture. And he did a giant, cause he totally understood what that picture was about. That's powerful right there. So, sir, thank you. Salute, Salute. appreciate you. Salute. We will Brothers, reach again. out to me. Reach out to me when we're off and uh, build with me, man. Absolutely. This, this is okay. This is okay. But right. this, this, yeah. this, this is our power. This is our, you know. And as far as being humble, it's all about our future, man. And think about a hundred. You know, in the native community, we're taught to think seven generations ahead. Mm -hmm. So if you think about what you do and how it affects seven generations, and we can win this, but there's no guarantee we will. But in the Viet Cong in, in Vietnam used to have a saying that they win by not losing and the Americans lose by not winning. So we take that energy from the revolutionaries and say our enemies lose by not winning and we win by not losing. Mm. All right. And on that note, we out of here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please make sure that you support Brother Ernie's book, Hip Hop at the End of the World, and also buy Who Shot You if you don't already have it in your library. Make sure you follow him on all socials as well. Follow us on Day One Radio on all your socials, and we'll see y'all next week with another dumb let me show. Share, let me share a weapon with your listeners. Okay, go right ahead. I believe in weapons. And you can censor this if you want. The greatest weapon we have 
is to love ourselves more than they hate us. Mm. Boom. There you go. Peace, brother. Peace. Thank you.